on January 12, 2016, a great woman died, described by the youth in her country as that pretty face on the MK200 banknote, the third most powerful banknote after the MK1000 and the MK500. In one of the last interviews she gave, ironically to a local youth radio, she lamented how freedom fighters are sidelined in key government events, highlighting the 50 years independence celebration in 2014. Who is this heroine largely ignored in democratic Malawi until Bingu Wa Mutarika, Malawi's third president, gave her that honor? Dear friends, welcome aboard the Sankofa flight heading to Southeast Africa to discover Rose Chibambo, a prominent leader in the fight against British colonialism and the first female cabinet minister in the independent Malawi, whose real name Lomatinda means snatch from the grave. And you will understand why in this episode. African History Daily by my daddy. Born on September 8, 1928, Rose was only 24 years old when she started organizing women in Zomba, the then capital of Malawi, to protest against the colonial government because the men of the Nyasaland African Congress, NAC, later Malawi Congress Party, including her own husband, Edwin, were not highlighting enough women's plight in the struggle. One year later, in 1953, just before the imposition of the much-hated federation which brings under white rule Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe, she encroaches into a meeting between chiefs <laughs> and pro-federation agents. No need to say that she was told of her place as a woman. Later on, two Malawians are put into the federal parliament in Salisbury, today's Harare. Rose is a vocal critic calling for the removal when she is not agitating for the secession of Malawi out of a federation. It is quite logically that when Kamuzubanda is brought back to Malawi five years into the fight against the federation to lead the fight for independence, Rose was the one in charge of what was to eventually morph into the powerful women's league in post-independence days. Rose was also the only woman who attended the so-called Bush meeting in January 1959, a secret conference called by the NAC in response to rumors about white settlers planning to kill Kamuzubanda. The colony got then out of control and the governor, Robert Armitage, declares a state of emergency on the 3rd of March 1959 and then sent armored trucks from Rhodesia. Thousands of arrests followed, including Kamuzu himself picked in his pajamas and flew directly to Gweru prison in Zimbabwe. But Rose was spared because she was heavily pregnant then, but as soon as she delivers her baby in Tiolo district, her husband Edwin is arrested at home, soon followed by Rose and her two days old baby. She is then driven to Zomba prison where she is joined by other female activists. Rose and her baby, named Gadi after her guard in prison, both stayed in jail for 13 months. She was finally released when negotiations for independence started in 1961. Remember, the NAC was the party fighting for radical independence, but those young and radical politicians needed a father figure to rally Malawians behind NAC goals. That's how they invited Kamuzu back to Malawi. Malawi became independent in July 1964 Kamuzu became Prime Minister and Rose Chibambo, the only woman member of Parliament and the Parliamentary Secretary for Kamuzu in his role as Minister of several portfolios. However, two months later, she is a backbencher fighting to defend her name against the same Kamuzu in the now famous Malawi's Cabinet Crisis of 1964. The genesis of this crisis was mostly lying with Kamuzu's conservatism. Post-independence, pragmatic Kamuzu 
made alliances that are anathema to his young fighters. He established diplomatic relations with apartheid South Africa, who then paid Malawi handsomely by, among other things, building the current capital of Lilongwe. Kamozu also recognized Portugal as the official owners of neighboring Mozambique. The breaking point was the so-called tiki, a three-pence payment that Kamuzu introduced in the public hospital while at the same time reducing perks for some civil servants. His young ministers confronted Kamuzu by threatening to resign in the process. He then calls for an emergency parliament sitting where he gets the vote of confidence. Rose Chibambo finds herself as a casualty of this crisis hearing the news of her dismissal as parliamentary secretary via the radio. The next day in parliament, on her birthday, she tries to clear her name. I was Rose Chibambo before Kamuzu came here, she said in a speech that was stopped many times by the rude comments made by her male counterparts. When she tries to raise her voice, the speaker of parliament reminds her that she cannot shout here because this is our house, like the male politician's house. Again, this encroaching business. Very soon after that, Rose and other freedom fighters on the wrong side of Kamuzu flees with her family to Zambia, where she remained for 30 years, completely forgotten by her country, until another freedom fighter, Chakufu Chihana, invited her back to Malawi in 1994. Rose died on January 12, 2016, and was buried in the brand new Square of Heroes in Mzuzu in northern Malawi that became her house, where she will now be the one for once who will be welcoming the other heroes, the male heroes of Malawi, into her home. My African cliché of the day is this dangerous and humiliating practice of importing and trying to impose names from elsewhere on concepts that have been long practiced by Africans. I'm talking, for example, about those who thought they were explaining feminism to African women, African female independent fighters. They call it Afrofeminism, it seems, and I wonder if they know that Rose Chibambo, for example, didn't need to declare herself as a feminist. No need for a label, no need for an etiquette. Her life being so much of a biography of fighting. She has met all her life this unfair feeling of the one that perpetually encroaches on male prebends, be they white or black. So if you are an African born free, if you are a woman or just a lover of freedom, well, you should read her conversation with writer Timwali Penga, soberly titled Lumatinda, Rose Chibambo Speaks. That reading will fill you with joy and as you will see, her courage and heritage will fit you then like a glove. Enjoy your reading and see you soon on board. Thank you and goodbye.